Hello, it's Sharice again here. In the previous video, we learned about the various production styles of video and the different ways it can be shared. In this video, let's look more into why video primary is relevant in education today, specifically the trends and the affordances of video for the 21st century learner. So who is a 21st century learner? Much of the literature now talks about the digital natives, consisting of the millennial generation who are savvy digital tool users and creators. But digital natives are not the only ones benefiting from vid video primary for learning. In her research with students studying English, Alyssa Carter found that there are three types of students who use videos for learning. Traditional learners in face-to-face -face settings, hybrid learners who also like face-to-face -face settings but use videos to reinforce their learning, and the autonomous learners who tend to watch videos all on their own and lean on teachers for clarification. In a world where the total global video traffic is projected to be 77% of all internet traffic by 2019, and where 69% have mobile devices compatible for video content, harnessing the power of video has become essential for the 21st century learner. Research shows that today's educational technology now includes distributed, and digitally shaped technologies, where the process of stitching together distributed interactions is important, with learners who control their own preferred tool sets, and video plays an important component in these interactions. Anna Hansch and her colleagues described the nine affordances of videos as a component in learning, where videos have the ability to build rapport, show virtual field trips, manipulate time and space, tell stories, motivate learners, display historical footage, conduct demonstrations, show visual juxtaposition, and present multimedia. Overall, video has become and continued to be an important piece of the educational landscape. Video allows for dynamic content to be more accessible across multiple platforms and devices, which can be viewed by learners before, during, and after class, in the classroom, in the comfort of their own homes, or on the move, and at their own pace. Again, we'd like to invite you to join the conversation by making a comment below. You can share with us what video means to you, or you can choose to reflect on some of these questions. What do you use it for? Where do you view it? How does video make you feel as opposed to listening to audio or reading print? And how do you share it? In the next videos, Sabrina and Chelsea will dig deeper into video primary from the educator and learner perspectives. Click here to get started.